Hi, Paul. Hey, Chris. Is Matt here yet? Nope, not yet. You gotta wait a little bit longer. Still gone. Maybe a bunch of weeks. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not. It's not like a uh, Harvey double underscore dent situation. It's, but it's. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know why he leaves for any given reason. For Matt's, the foreseeable future. <laughs> Matt's working. He knows when this work is over, and then he'll be back. And he regrets not being here. But well, enough about him. Uh, let's talk about us. We're the important two. We yes, us. We, I, well, actually, I I chose Matt before I chose you, but that's okay. <laughs> you <laughs> that's okay. you choose me. <laughs> so what did uh, what happened in my world this week? I I'm gonna screen share something. Ooh. I know you had NJCC this week. Did you get anything good from NJCC? This, uh, I didn't get any Lego there. I saw some Lego. I didn't buy any Lego there. Ah, this is right up my alley, though, right here. I like this. This is good stuff. So I, I had a lot of trade-ins in the last week, and it's mostly bulk. I took in about 180 pounds in bulk Lego in the last week, and that's that's definitely high. High on a, for the average of what I would take in at the store. Because everyone's bringing out their Lego and cashing in. But is that this, a thing now? <laughs> that's been a thing. I, all I had to do was open a Lego store and everyone's bringing me their Lego. It's kind of the opposite of what a store does, but that's okay. <laughs> um, this is a uh, an actual trade, not, a, not for cash, but for stuff. So this guy, Eric, came in and he... He had a bunch of architecture sets that he had had on display. So these are all used sets, by the way. It's all taken apart in bags, in, in the boxes with the instructions. It's all there. The extra pieces are probably still there. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know about that. <laughs> one, of them I th- one of them, I think, I saw a little bag of extras. So we'll see. Wait, before I'm you not- go for- any further, is this set, like, does it go for more, in quotes? Is it worth more if it has the extra pieces as well, or do people not care? Oh no, nobody cares about that. Okay, good because I because I, I always just nobody cares them up somewhere else. <laughs> okay, good. I've seen actually some cool things done with extra pieces. Usually, you don't know what to do with them. I've seen, and I wish I could find that picture again. I tried to find it, but somebody made a mosaic, for lack of a better term, only using their extra pieces, where they covered an entire forty-eight by forty-eight base plate in kind of like a rainbow sweep of colors. <laughs> I for like all that. the extras they had, so it was it was this really highly greebled rainbow splat on this uh, on this base plate. I dig it, it though. Cool. Good for them. That's pretty creative. Mine go in a jar. Yeah, that works. No, that's creative too. Because they're all <laughs> small and they'll fit in there, and then then you can do something with it. Maybe. Oh no, you're sending it to me, aren't you? Yep, I will send them over to uh, to uh, the Warminster Brick Shop, so you can do something with it. Because you're looking for part-time help to sort, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm not. Doing. That, that was in my post, but oh. <laughs> uh, this guy he he was eyeing up a couple of the bigger sets that we had in the store, and he he doesn't feel like the architecture sets fit what he's going for anymore, which is fine. He Where wanted he, he wanted the Ole Kirk house, the uh, employee gift set. Oof. I had that. That was marked at three hundred and seventy five dollars. He wanted one of them and he wanted one of the two Main Street sets we had from 1980. Oh, nice. We had one with a box and the cypress tree and almost complete, and then one without a box, without a cypress tree, and missing a little bit more than the one that had the cypress tree. So he got the Ole Kirk house, he got the Main Street, and he's going to pick one more small vintage set. And he gave me all of these in exchange for that. Nice. And I've found that it's, it's often a lot better to have a bunch of smaller or cheaper things than one big expensive thing in the store like this. You are correct. Lego feels the same way in general. So good job. They they often enjoy three small things. <laughs> they indeed they do. But um yeah that was one of the things that, that Adam had Adam Retucker again the only, I bring it up only because we're talking about a lot of his sets here. 
that's why so many of them are the, are the smaller sets. The like the Sears Tower there, or the John Hancock and the uh, the yeah, Space Needle, and all those in that size were they were uh, mandated is certainly not the right word, but they wanted them that size so they can be sold easily at the gift shop, and so that was the exact price point they were looking for and the size they're looking for to make it work, and they agree with you. Smaller things tend to sell better. I'll tell you what that. That John Hancock Center there is 69 pieces, and it is currently $70 used. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's – it's got to be mostly the tile because, I mean, what is that, $3 in parts otherwise? If that, to be honest. Like, it's the, – the first time I saw some of these sets, I was like, what the hell, $20 for – it was that John Hancock and the Sears Tower – but then I got into it, and so <laughs> obviously that that feeling passed. But um, yeah, it's it's it seems like a lot of money for a very small number of bricks. But it, at at the time, it was something special for the the packaging, the way they did the box and the presentation and the booklet and all that kind of stuff. It was something special at the time, um, and I, I've written that something special all the way through <laughs> until now. <laughs> Um, so the Roby ha is it Roby or Robbie? Roby. Okay. Everyone keeps calling it Robbie, but I, I thought I heard you call it Roby, so I've been calling it, it Roby. Indeed. I've I've been there and went to the tour at the uh, unveiling of the Roby house set. So it is definitely Roby. Been there, roped that. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, the winner here. That's three hundred dollars for that thing. Love that set. Uh three hundred used. And these are all used. And then some of them are up there, but the the White House is only thirty bucks used. I think because it's been so available. That's a big set, isn't it? Oh, I'm thinking the Capitol building. Yeah, no, I don't know which one I'm thinking of. <laughs> you don't even know the White House. Uh, so I, I've sold so far the uh, the White House, the UN headquarters, and the Louvre. <laughs> Those three have sold. I shipped actually shipped the. UN and the White House, somebody. And the, the Louvre sold today. Somebody came in and bought a... They just they made a big old stack of sets that they wanted to buy. I don't even know what they were doing. There you I go. hope they were buying gifts because they got like multiples of the same set and they bought all of these different themes. I don't know what they were doing. But they bought those. Uh, hopefully some more of these sell in the coming weeks. They got a lot of good attention yeah, uh, on this post. You've got some good uh, architecture sets there, some that are that I like quite a bit, and some that are old and early in the line. So I know you can't get them anymore. Um, was one of them Donald Raper Rober? Did you was, was he one of the people that that bought a bunch of sets from you? Because <laughs> he seems to have some uh, some some interests. Uh, he made a comment. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I I just saw him over there. No, he didn't. Uh... He did not. Most people who comment on this page are local because they like it because they've been there or they, they were go are going to go there or they know somebody who is also local who's been there. Um, I was surprised to see somebody from because I mailed it to Washington, D.C. Probably why they got the White House. But not, <laughs> not the U.N. That's in New York. Um, uh, I I'm surprised that they they like the page because I I mean unless they I am, they might just like Lego pages I don't know they may, they, they may be part of the uh, the realm of collectors because Brink was was uh, pushing your store pretty heavy when it first opened realm <laughs> realm uh, so that came in and that's really exciting I've been having a fun time trying to sell those we're deciding right now if we want to build them to try to sell them built versus in the box because they are used so we they have the option of building them and i don't know if that'll make them sell any better interesting an interesting point i i don't know actually um i mean least, certainly they're more impressive when they're built um, yeah they also they display very nice on their side like this which is yeah good, this that is did not have enough space, space. <laughs> exactly we, we are not a uh, front-facing set on the shelf kind of retail store yet. <laughs> well, I mean, the, you could build these and throw them in your details. That that would work. Those details are for me. Oh, I didn't realize <laughs> They're not that. for the store. They're for me. 
Even though they're in the store, they're not for the store. <laughs> they're in the office behind the store. Oh, got it. <laughs> uh, so that's what I that's what I did. I got a bunch of um, architecture sets through a trade. I got a ton of bulk through a number of other trades, and I am working my way through that bulk and introducing lots of parts to my fill a cup tables, fill a bag tables, and and taking out the things I want because I'm going to be recording some sorting videos very soon. Um, it sounds then, very exciting. I can't wait to watch you sort Lego. I, it might not be for you, but it's going to be for somebody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's cool, though. I mean, obviously, you got some good stuff in the store there, and then some good stuff for uh, for those who like sets, for those people who are like me that like to build per instruction and uh, have a display, and for those who operate on their own as master builders who uh, prefer the bulk. I think it's awesome. How about you this week? What did you do, Paul? Let's see. So I am also going to share and, again, pray that uh, that my connection is secure. <laughs> um, I started opening up all of the uh, LEGO Dimensions sets that are uh, kits, whatever you want to call those, boxes that I got <laughs> on, on Black Friday. The realm of chapstick collectors. <laughs> yeah, so that was. I, I, I that said was I said something to Dust, and he immediately goes, "I'm going to send him a message." So he's yeah. standing there looking me in the face when he typed that message to you. Yeah, so you know. yeah I assumed he was just joking, and uh, I was. I'm sure I was right because I'm sure well, it was fuck him up chapstick. Well, it was. It was. It was Jay Ruse, and it was Brink, and it was Pinkerton, and they were all like chapsticking up every thirty seconds while having a conversation, and I was like, "This is weird." Weird, man. <laughs> I didn't know they yeah, actually I, I, I opened my phone, and this is the top photo. And I'm like, this is weirder. <laughs> it definitely is. But this this falls under the, I'm going to tag all sorts of shit on, on Realm of Collectors, so J. Ruse has to look at it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so as far, going back to Lego, uh, this is uh, some of the uh, Lego Dimension sets that I have. I was trying to create room on my shelves and re reduce the amount of... Uh, I think what Matt called it, Lego shame or whatever, he, something like that. Um, that was this unopened Lego sets that we have. And these are the, uh, the Adventure Time ones. So I'm a big fan of Adventure Time, even though I think the show is not as good as it used to be. Um, I was super excited to have actual minifigure versions and not the Lego idea build versions, because I think these look better. Um, but we got your, your Finn the Human, Jake the Dog, Marceline the Vampire Queen, Lumpy Space Princess, and probably my favorite of this set here is the buildable BMO figure, which I think is hilarious. Um, she, is that BMO better or worse than the Ideas BMO? I like it better because it has more. I mean, this is this is obviously all a printed piece. I don't know if the Ideas one has printed pieces. I thought that was all just just built pieces, so I'm not positive. Um, I just know that that one didn't look very good, and I didn't like it. I, I, I'm not a big fan of like 8-bit looking things when you can get non 8 bit looking things. So I was all about the minifigure version as opposed to that square fin build. Except for Bimo, who is supposed to be square and look like a Game Boy. So it's appropriate for him. Oh, or her. I, I don't know I if really, Bimo's a guy or a girl. I really like your uh, disc stacking skills there. <laughs> well, Lumpy Space Princess would have been very short otherwise. And I figured Finn and Jake should be up front. Um, but yeah, Bimo there. She Bimo has gray hot dogs for arms. That's fucking hilarious. So yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> it's always that is that is really cool. I, I you know I love seeing old parts and new colors or new parts and new colors. Anything new, really. Anything that we yeah. haven't gotten before. I also I have to ask you: Has Lumpy Space Princess ever been abbreviated LSP, or did you just take a shot in the dark with that hashtag? No, no, no. They call her LSP on the show. Also. Okay. okay. Officially, her name is Lumpy Space Princess, but oftentimes referred to by her friends as LSP. So that's why that's there. Um, but yeah, I dig uh, these figures a lot. I would have liked to have had more, of course, to flesh out the universe, but understandably, they're not doing that anymore. So I'm glad to have what I've got. They might. I mean, there's going to be Powerpuff Girls sets that come out that are non. <laughs> I, I was trying to. That's a great segue. Words. 
<laughs> to the oh yeah, I was trying to fashion the word dimensions into denominational, <laughs> dimensional, non-dimensional, uh, but I, I it didn't work. I am looking forward to those. That actually, uh, I'm, I just plan on getting the minifigures that I don't have. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I look forward to getting more minifigures. Um, but here we got the the three main girls and Octi here. So. Um, you you've got your blossom, your bubbles, your bottle cup, buttercup, uh, all there. I like them. These are actually as cool as I thought they would be. I like they have a lot of personality in what is what seemingly is a like uh, a Playmobil size head, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I like it. Um, they did a lot of good, they did a good job with the paint uh, on their eyes to make them look like them. So I dig that. And I like how Octane is bored as fuck right there. <laughs> yeah, he, and you can t tilt the eyes a little bit and kind of get a little bit different expressions out of them because yeah. they rotate. Yeah. Uh, I, I also like that you have no love here for, although there is a right arrow I'm seeing, but there's no love here for the phone or the fist. You are correct. I did not build any of the, I've got just bags of pieces. The other picture are other ones that I got. All about the minifigures for these. Um, so yeah, I didn't build ET's phone. I didn't build. I think there's a a Teen Titans uh, like van or something like that in there. <laughs> and whatever the, whatever the one that was supposed to come with uh, the Powerpuff Girls ones, I don't remember what they were. It was um, the it was the Hotline those. and um, the. Fist. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's why you said those. Yeah, I did. I don't care about those. I will use the pieces. Or I will send you the pieces. So. I have them. They're built around here, the the fist and the hotline and the octi. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's the 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 only two or only three fifths of the Teen Titans Go team got a Teen Titans Go release. So um, I'm on the lookout for one specific uh, Mighty Micros Robin that kind of looks crazy and could would fit <laughs> well with these. And I gotta find. I'm hoping they make a Mighty Micro with Cyborg. That w I think that would also go well with their crazy faces. It would be yeah, and they're they're version. often uh, they're often kind of simplified. And I think maybe if they simplify the the uh, DC universe uh, cinematic universe uh, Cyborg, he might look a little bit more Teen Titans ish, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I haven't figured that out. I'm hoping I, it'll be a fun little side project I have to find the the pieces that will make that team look complete and fun. Um, but obviously, there's no real press or rush for that. <laughs> yeah, just, I, I'm actually in the same. Uh, hold on, I see there's a one insane hashtag in there. It must be the name of one of the characters. Uh, which one? Zarathmetriozenoth. Oh. Okay, so so what Raven says when she is make, doing a spell is Azarath Metrion Zinthos. So that's what that is. That's that's Ra Raven's kind of spell slash catch. I think race. that's like the fifth ingredient in Cherry Cook. <laughs> you would know, I suppose. If anyone would know, it would be you. So. Oh, you watch way too much TV. Well, these are all pretty much the same shows. These are all Cartoon Network shows. <laughs> uh, and, cord, and I'm, I'm all about the subline. So I was able to get like to, to basically almost basically complete the main the, the main roster of Powerpuff Girls, right? And I was hoping when I when I started getting these that they would still continue on with at least finishing out the Teen Titans Go uh, line, but I guess not. And I'm just it's hoping it's possible. That it's outside of dimensions. It's it's all possible. It is non-dimensional <laughs> in in if, in in my dreams. If uh, if these episodes had titles, the title this week would be non-dimensional. <laughs> uh, and then the other one, obviously, is ET over there, because because I dig ET. Who doesn't dig ET? So he. I mean, I don't dig ET, but that's me. But that figure, uh, just to to have that to go along with your Ghostbusters and your. Uh, Back to the Future. It seems to fit that kind of a a line, line in quotes, kind of a, a, an eighties nostalgia line. So I dig that. Um, I never got the the Gremlins ones, and I probably I feel bad that I didn't, but um, I'm sure they'll go on sale again sooner or later at fifty percent. They're all they're, they're all on sale for two dollars in the Southwest. 
Ooh, they're not by me. My my Toys R Us still has them, I think, at 10% off only, even though that Toys R Us is literally closing and going out of business. Well, you're not in the Southwest, and you're also buying your Lego from the worst place ever. <laughs> but I was just hoping that they would be on sale at, uh, at that Toys R Us, but apparently not. Um, and then the last thing I have as far as these goes is I don't know what the fuck to do with all of these now. <laughs> now that I have... I'm, I'm not making those little builds. Um, is there any... <laughs> demand for these at neither, all? neither does bricklink <laughs> okay so i'll just throw them in a bin somewhere and donate them or something like that these little base plates from the lego dimension sets if you don't play lego dimensions pretty much have no use as far as i know uh, i've seen i've seen a pretty cool mock with the blue ones I have a couple of blue ones from Unikitty and and some of those older well, ones. This would take like a couple hundred of them to build this, but I've seen a pretty cool mock. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I will try to look that up. And for those that uh, are listening to us here, I'm, I've got a picture of all of my spare uh, Lego Dimensions base plates or whatever you want to call those chip plates, those round things that, that you use to actually play the game, um, which I don't. So they are useless to me. And if I'm not building any of the things that are supposed to go on top of these, they really are useless to me for anything other than stacking up and making things slightly taller. <laughs> um, that's uh, So that's it. Oh, no, I did actually get one other thing as well. Chapstick. Uh, in addition to chapstick, I found a poly bag at, uh, at Walmart today, and it's a guy in a, in a, with a hot dog stand. And, um, Walmart I think or Target? This is Walmart. Um, I don't know if they have it at Target, but I found it at Walmart, certainly. They do. Um, it's in the uh, the Easter section is a friend's bag and this bag. Nice. Yeah, this did, it did seem to be a new one that I hadn't seen before. But I think he'll go well in my Lego City if I ever make and properly do a Lego City um, once I have the display space to do so. Um, and also, um, Citizen Brick, I think, um, did they they teased or they 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 showed a Portillo's um like hot dog vendor uh, or a guy that's oh, nice. And for those of you not not familiar with Portillo's, it's I know Chicago, what it is. It is a Chicago-based hot dog chain that is going around now. Now that um, the Portillo family has made enough money in their lifetimes, their, their millions and millions, they sold it, and now that they sold it, it is starting to proliferate to other places in the country. And uh, so maybe you know what it is, and if you, you happen to pass by a Portillo's and have not yet tried it, you definitely should. Their food is delicious and fattening and sticks to your ribs and just amazing. That's, that's Chicago eating in a nutshell right there. <laughs> is you got to do a lot of heavy, heavy blue-collar work. You need to power up. Yes, there you go. Um, Chris is showing the Portillo's uh, minifigure that they have put together. They haven't announced that they're going to do one uh, on mass, I guess. Or, but I, I'm really hoping that at Brickfest or Brick World, Brick World, that they are going to have that guy for sale, because it's in the Chicago land area at Brick World Chicago or Brick World Schaumburg. It'll sell like hotcakes, and I really hope that I get one in time. If yeah, they if, sell if one. they're selling that, you got to get me one. So. Yep. Uh, if they do, I will get that, and then I will bring it to you at TFCon because I'm making you go to TFCon. Okay. I, I think we could dedicate an entire episode to Citizen Brick's new uh, stud club, or whatever it is. They have an entirely new like system of points you earn from making purchases, and their frequent buyer this and that. And, I will uh, put that on the list for future topics. <laughs> Figure out what Citizen Brick Stud Club <laughs> is and then tell everybody else what you learned. <laughs> Citizen Brick Stud Club. I think I'm just going to leave it at that because that sounds funnier. Should anybody find my phone and be like, what the hell is Stud Club? What is he looking up on his phone? Damn. Uh, um, that's, but that is uh, all I've got for me. <laughs> yeah, that was... um. That was good stuff. I, I went to Portillo's when I was in Chicago last for uh, Brick World. So we in June. Last June, nice. I went to Portillo's. I didn't get a hot dog because I really don't like hot dogs. I've come to, to learn this in my life that I don't care for hot dogs. It took me if a you long don't like time. Hot dogs, if you don't like hot dogs, the Chicago style hot dog will not change your mind. That is just. Oh, no. Even Chicago style hot dog is just a hot dog with a bunch of shit on it. 
I don't it need isn't that. Indeed. Exactly. So if you don't it, like hot dogs, that won't do it. <laughs> it's like a hoagie, but the meat is a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> what did you order? I'm I'm very curious as a um, as a native Chicagoan. I don't remember. Do they do they have like some kind of roast pork situation? Uh, they're no. They would be known for their Italian beef. Ideally, is the other that, thing. That's that probably what it was. That. Yeah, it was probably that. And I, I am a big fan of the Italian beef. Portillo's particularly is also known for their their chocolate cake, and their chocolate cake shake, in which they literally blend up a slice of their very <laughs> decadent chocolate cake, and then sprinkle pieces of chocolate cake on the top of it, uh, all into full fat delicious ice cream and that that shake is one of the most delicious things i've ever had in my life they have like a lemon cake too right the lemon cake is they stopped selling it about 10 years ago and then there was what? one guy there's one guy that like had complained enough or just pestered them enough that they were like you know what for you we'll bring it out they, they sent this guy a lemon cake and then they decided to, to re-release it for a limited time only and so it was actually released for I think a month and a half last summer, and it was indeed what? delicious. Yeah. No, I didn't get it. Oh, uh, oh, damn! That's right. It was. I, I was looking at was... the sign and I was like, "Do I want to get this? I already paid because you 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 yell at them and they yell at you and you give them money and then you wait over there, and that's yeah. how it works." Um, indeed. <laughs> and they're like, "What do you want? Why don't you know what you want?" I'm like, "I don't know. You got like ten thousand more things than I thought you were gonna have, Mister Hot Dog Man." <laughs> and what uh, actually I makes been... it worse is that they usually have someone in order to make things more efficient. For those who have never been, they'll have somebody come in and like while you're still in line and take your order. So you don't even have like the time where you're waiting in line to look that, at the menu. That happened just, to me. Yeah. Yeah. They assume that you know. <laughs> well. I mean, I guess that's enough for Portillo's talk uh, <laughs> this time around. We, uh, I, I have a um, a shout out I'd like to do. I guess, uh, I guess I got a screen share again. I wish there was like a one button screen share. Like send it back over to the thing. I don't it's need only. that anymore. I want this one now. So a bunch of episodes ago, because this is episode nineteen right now. Woo, we did it. A bunch of episodes ago. I called for, and this is after seeing the, we either saw the diner revealed or one of you guys got it or something, but the diner was on, on topic. And I said, you need to get the Citizen Break Mayor of Flavortown figure, the Guy Fieri. You need to get the Lola car from the uh, Detroit Steel Strikes, whatever it's called. I don't remember what it's called. It's some weird name for for that. That segment. one, and you need to get the diner, and you need to put them all together for a diner's drive-ins and dives uh, picture. And finally, N Talk did this. This was at the end of February. Uh, she put together the three things. Three small things. The three. Well, one of them is a big one, thing. One large thing. One, one large thing, one medium thing, and one small thing. But she put them all together, and she said, like, how many clutch points do I get for this? Indeed, and that's the question of the day. How many clutch points does she get, Chris? She, does, she deserves them. I don't know, but she um, she she tagged Guy in this, and Citizen oh. Brick, <laughs> and, uh, and me, and you, and, and Matt. Actually, not you, just, just Matt. <laughs> it's okay. You tagged me. It's fine. It's me and Matt. I don't even realize she already tagged Matt when I tagged Matt. But uh, she tagged Food Network too. Like I want to know: Has Guy Fieri seen this figure, and what does he think of it? Because they're clearly still selling them, so there hasn't been a season desist yet. But that was really cool to see that. And then I think there's another picture here. Um, <laughs> He's got the car. <laughs> We're rolling out. <laughs> that should have been the caption. It's just, We're rolling out. So, a uh, big <laughs> shout out to Ntalk there for, for putting that putting that together. And uh, well, well done, Ntalk. You beat me, even though I had all the plans in the world to do it. Life has gotten in the way, and I haven't had a chance to build that that, that modular yet. So, I, I awesome. want to say, whatever the opposite of... Uh, shout out is to everyone who uh, didn't do this before she got a chance to do this. <laughs> come on. What's, what's the problem here? 
That's you have true. this, you have that, you have that. Take the picture. <laughs> like if, if, if you're going to put this diner in your city and you're not also putting the mayor of Flavortown and the car in front of it, then a city you do not have. Yeah, you're, you're doing it wrong if that's the case. Doing it wrong. <laughs> but very, very cool. Nice job, Antok. Well played. All the clutch points to you. All of them, I, just innumerable. That's how many clutch points there are. Thank you for <laughs> putting that together. It wasn't too much of a challenge, especially if there are things you're going to buy anyway. I think the the mayor of Flavortown figure was the most difficult and uh, questionable to obtain item there. Yeah, I went to try to get one at uh, at my mall, and they did not have the mayor of Flavortown because they are they are phasing out third party. Uh, products so they were they were phasing out the uh, citizen brick figures at wait at what what store uh hold on brick mania brick mania they're phasing out third party stuff they are third party understood uh, and that was kind of what i was thinking too but i think they're phasing out not their third party stuff <laughs> that's fine if you're big enough yeah you don't need to stock your store with uh, other people's stuff and yeah, go for I, it i suppose if they have i mean they the, their stuff is like 90% like World War II war stuff. And then their other one off like sci fi things that they do and stuff like that. So Guy Fieri seems a little out of place there, I suppose. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Um, but I also have a shout yeah. out. Why don't, for, you, why don't you show uh, us what you got there, Paul? And uh, I will do my screen share again without the extra button of uh, the screen share. Um, Ooh, lens flare. <laughs> For those of you listening, uh, I am shouting out at Brickworks, spelled B-R-I-K-W-E-R-X, um, who is a Lego photographer um, and uh, very creatively shot pictures and very, uh, very well done, very well composed pictures as well. So sometimes I like to feature people who have really cool builds and sometimes I like to feature those who do a really good job with their minifigures and photography in general, and this is the latter there. Um, he does a lot of the kind of, for those of you who also listen to Enter the Realm, some of the uh, ACBA or type kind of, cheat is certainly not the right word, but uh, if there's not a diorama there, um, a way that you can get around it is by having kind of a cardboard picture in the background and taking a picture of a figure in front of it. So this uh, ATAT driver, I think this might be, uh, is kind of in front of um, what looks like a, a World War II plane, a World War One plane, uh, I would actually guess, uh, there. And uh, I just think that it was a, a very creative use of the space and, and a very interesting choice to have uh, this guy in front of... I, I like the dichotomy of a sci-fi uh, driver in front of an old-school warplane. I, I, I kind of like the... I kind of like what they're doing with that. Um, and then additionally, there are, he does do a lot. Oh, I guess here you go. A black classic space guy in front of an image of what looks to be a B-2 bomber. Uh, or a, Oh, there you go. An SR-71 uh, right over there. So obviously not things that he actually has in the same place, but they, they go well together color scheme wise. And I, and, uh, and I dig it. Well done. I always like a good classic black spaceman uh, being featured anywhere. We do also have some very good ones that do seem to be in uh, either well photoshopped or um, in front uh, or in the actual place. Um, I don't actually, this one probably isn't. Uh, upon quick glance, it looked like it, but I'm going to guess this is actually a minifigure in front of a picture that he did take in the past um, in order to get this huh. this minifigure to be this size in this picture. Um, it looks to be that he took a picture of a figure um, in the actual, like in, in nature, and then printed out that picture and took a picture of another minifigure, minifigure in front of that picture. <laughs> so these are these aren't classic space. What's 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 what are these? Which that's, do you know what line? That's Futuron. Oh, there you go. Futuron. I should have guessed with the blue uh, the blue visors and the size of visor. Um, but he has a yellow Futuron guy and a black Futuron guy. Um, just in the way that he shot it, looks like in your kind of what would be like a 
the Enterprise beaming onto an unknown planet and doing some exploring and finding that it is indeed an M-class planet and they can they can breathe, well, they can't breathe, obviously, since they still have their tanks, but they can explore in something that seems like it is a regular Earthen-type environment. The, the flora and fauna of Earth were there. So I like that a lot. Um, we do also have uh, just a wide variety of figures in general. So we have... Uh, your old timey prospector, your uh, this is Davy Jones, I believe, um, yeah. in the middle here. Um, here's <laughs> an old school Boba Fett figure, uh, I think one of the early ones uh, at the Grand Canyon, which, again, uh, the the kind of the dichotomy of the the the, the spaceman uh, against some of some old Earth uh, kind of nature. Uh, I, I love the, the 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 contrast in 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 themes and in ideas there so i dig that quite a bit um i like red classic spaceman in front of a shell that looks like angel wings right over there um i can't quite tell if this is again a picture in or the minifigure in front of a picture um but it is standing on a rock so it looks real enough in this case here i think um, it's laying um the rock is it's laying on its back on the tanks. Okay, yeah, that, and that makes sense. That could work. Just, the feet are against a rock. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, but I just don't know if the background is real or not in this case. I mean, um, what is real? <laughs> indeed, what indeed is real? Um, and here he has the ghost collectible. Mi- Actually, I don't know what this lady, what this figure was called in the collectible minifigure series. I believe though. Is it the banshee? Yeah, there you go. It's a banshee. Good call. Um, I did I did like this figure quite a bit, and I think it looks great. Again, in, in nature, I think it, it makes it a very uh, interesting picture. Um, but some of the ones that I really do like here, uh, he has some of the custom um, mouse guard figures, which I do also have as well. Um, I love the fiction of the mouse guard comic book and the comic series. And... Um, these are very good custom figures that, that uh, were uh, available for purchase at one point. They are not anymore, <laughs> but um, they were really good. And again, just uh, and just you don't see a lot of Lego photography that is done ACBA style, where it is um, where they do a really good job with the composition of the foreground and background. And I like this quite a bit for just the accomplishment that they, that he's done with a number of these, where he has. Um, just again using some of the uh, mouse guard figures in in nature makes it look like they are in their home world. They 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 run around in nature in the forest, and uh, I like that quite a bit. Um, here is a picture of is this a? Uh, it's not just a camel. Is, is this one of the Prince of Persia figures? Yes. There you go on a camel in the sand. Um, I dig that quite a bit. Um, again, keeping him in in his natural environment. Um, and let's see. Let's show one. Uh, here's one. So you have the bandit, and you have, I think, an old old school bandito. Let's call him. <laughs> Is that a math train. bandit? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, and in front of a train as if they were going to do a train robbery. Brilliant. I love it. Um, just very smart and uh, an educated composition with the picture and also keeping with the theme of the figures themselves. So something that you can certainly do if you have a boatload of minifigures, like he obviously does, and um, and, uh, and a good eye for photography and a good eye for just un- a good understanding of what would look good with it. Um, and also I do just like, I like Benny and uh, Space Wild Child. Or wild style. I mean, I, I like that. It's just a, a cute little picture. Um, use a lot of filters here to make it seem very anima- animated. Uh, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but I like the way that he did it, and it looks good. I've seen a number of uh, photographers online, Lego photographers. That that's almost like it's almost like a subtle uh, prisma uh, effect on that. Oh like, yeah, that that that. that I, was I really like the one, uh, the four. Um, uh, Royal Guards, yeah, alternating black and and red. That's that's a really I, I would I would buy that like as a print. It is a pretty stunning. Again, it's it's a very well done shot, and um, I like the use of the uh, this of, of the light the light source, which creates these shadows um, that are going across. Again, what looks like yeah, in this case it kind of would be a Tatooine esque. 
type uh, environment. Obviously, that's not where they are, but it is very sandy, very rocky. Um, what do you mean they're not really on Tatooine? <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen a number of these kind of uh, photographers where it seems like they just they buy tons and tons of uh, minifigures, mostly collectible minifigures, and they don't have any any sets or any parts or any any mocks. They just they they want the figures for the uh, for for their photography and that's fine it's it's kind of like buying um uh, tons of hasbro action figures only there's no other way to get them besides on their own yep hopefully they send their bricks over to warminster brick shop so that that's right hopefully them. they uh they support <laughs> a three and three quarter inch sale barge because hasbro doesn't have any money apparently that thing's going to be really expensive. So if that's the way that they do it, that's the way they do it. I am not going to get it, but I hope that those who want it can get it because it looks awesome. Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is – oh, no, actually, I like this one as well. One last one. This is um, uh, Dagobah Luke uh, with Yoda on his back and uh, an R2-D2 in the background in what very much seems like a swamp kind of uh, – environment so perfect for his training on Dagobah good job Brickworks um, for those of you who missed it that is at Brickworks at B-R-I-K W-E-R-X go ahead and give them a follow uh, if you like Lego photography and cool spe uh, cool features on Lego minifigures your weapons need them you will not <laughs> indeed and there's you I will stop sharing so it's actually you there you go hey uh, thank you for the awesome shout out to Brickworks, which um, I mean, I'm sure there's a hundred different accounts that have some variation of that name in them, but that's okay. <laughs> they seem to be doing a good job and holding down their name very well. So awesome photography there. Uh, I wanted to get into a segment I like to call "Buy My Shit." <laughs> It works on me, so <laughs> go yeah. for it. Well, maybe. I don't know. You haven't really bought anything from me yet, so there's we'll that. Ex we'll explain why a little bit later. <laughs> so I like to promote the Lego lifestyle, and I've, I've said that before. And I, I like to bring Lego lifestyle elements to the world that wouldn't necessarily be there if I didn't create them. I would hope that others are creating this kind of thing or – have already created this kind of thing and I've overlooked it, but I like creating a product that I would want to buy if somebody else had created that product. And um, hopefully I can convince Paul to buy them. Buy them, Paul. <laughs> You're taking matters into your own, your own hands. Didn't get what you wanted? Yes. I'll do it myself. I, I seem to do that a lot. Uh, so I have two things running right now. One I just started and one's been going for over a year now. The AFOL poster subscription service has been going for, uh, let's see, March would be the 15th month. So the 15th monthly poster has shipped. I've done the three extras in 2017. So this is the 18th poster I've produced. And basically, it is a subscription if you want it to be where you get a 17, 11 by 17 poster tube shipped to you monthly anywhere in the world. Or if you don't want every single poster for a little bit more money, you can buy individual posters. So you can pick and choose the ones you like. What are these posters? They are original artwork by different artists every month from around the world, all in the Lego theme. Each artist has a different style and they answer the simple prompt of pick a Lego set and recreate it in your own style. We've got a lot of different styles going so far. Two of them were actually hand painted rather than created digitally. That's cool. Uh, the second of those two was hand painted and then delivered to me. And I said, uh, what do I do with this? <laughs> um, but that, that became the February poster. The second poster well, actually, February of last year was another hand-painted one that I didn't receive the digital file for. But the original is out there. So do you have, like, do you get, like, the 
prototype for lack of a better word like do they uh give you like the original I, that you keep in the store or something like that um for the second hand painted one i do have the original for the first one i think actually carter has it because his sister was the artist for That's that cool. one so he might have the original for that first one that was hand painted but i get uh, a lot of rough drafts along the way which are going to come in handy when i release a coffee table book of all these later so I was on. Gonna say, that'd be kind of a fun, like compilation book or, you know, yeah. similar to the pack of cards that came in last year's rock box. You can just do a whole series of like trading cards for all of these. Or for those of you, who, for those of us that can't devote that much wall space to 18 posters at this point. <laughs> I, I was going to do a book at the end of 2017, but I didn't think there was enough content yet. And I didn't want it to be a real short book. So my goal is now to put out a book at the end of 2018 with two years worth of artwork. I like it. Drafts and background and all that. And I, I love the posters, but I might love this book more. Dude, that's, I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan of those kinds of things. I've, I've backed a bunch of Kickstarter type projects that are similar to that, that uh, will co- do kind of collections of things, but also what I like, the most is kind of the behind the scenes. So the, the rough drafts and any notes that you might have um, that you might have given to the artists or any, any notes that the artist might have, that's the kind of the insight that I actually like the most about those types of projects and those kinds of, um, I guess, products and, and books. So it's like your, your director's commentary on a DVD or something like that. That's the kind of stuff that I like the most is just to kind of see things that you don't normally see and you don't normally – you're not normally privy to that kind of information. So these posters have covered a lot of different Lego themes, and I'm happy with some of the the pseudo celebrity artists that I've had work on these, and that a lot of the artists are coming back to me saying, "Hey, I, I really liked doing that poster. Can I do another one for one of your upcoming months? Because I release cool. one a month, and I try to not use the same artist." twice if possible to get more artists in there and more variety because i i want to try to get as many different artistic styles as i can and i i haven't yet used any artists that are really out there with um their style it's it's all been not similar but nothing has been a more modern or a, like a postmodern kind of MoMA esque style yet. <laughs> so no, uh, no Magritte style uh, paintings or no uh, Picasso type things. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything really out there. I would love to see that though. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of illustrators, basically, is what I've had so far. And I have a really nice one lined up for April. It's done. I have to um, purchase the artwork and then send it to print and get the write-up ready for that one. So April's done. May is going to be really cool, too. May is going to be more in the graphic design angle than the art angle. And I I worked with the artist on that one to come up with the, the concept for it. Which I don't usually do. I, I usually am pretty hands off with the with the products. I I don't want to I don't want to get an artist who is like, all right, what do you want? <laughs> I, I want an <laughs> artist where I can say, hey, you know Lego, pick something that speaks to you, and then do it in your own style. I think that's that's definitely for the best. It it's, it's it comes off a bit more genuine, and they have a little more. They would have a little more passion as to what they want to do and why they did it. And if, if there's a reason for it, if it's something that they like, you'll get a overall a better product. Nothing, nothing against those who are able to work on commission like that is what do you want this? Yeah, I can do that, but you get something there's a little more heart to it. And I like that a lot. Yeah. And I don't know that you'd want to leave it, the conceptual angle of it up to me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, I, any, wish, uh, I wish I could do art because then I wouldn't be paying any of these people. I'd just do all the posters <laughs> myself. <laughs> do you have any like pictures of, of past posters or anything like that? Are they on the uh, on your website? They are all available for purchase at afolposter.com. 
and nice. uh, they're all still available. I I guess technically they're limited in their quantity, so get them while I still have a lot of them. <laughs> I have two vendors who sell them for me at national Lego conventions. I will also be selling them at Philly Brick Fest in April. So you can come to my booth and see them. I might be displaying them at the convention as well. I'm waiting to hear if that's okay or not. But Chris, how would you display all of these posters in one single spot? <laughs> well, well, I want to actually get them printed real big. like Oh, four, geez, really? Like four feet wide, each one. Damn. Printed like huge as like a walkthrough gallery kind of thing. I'm waiting to hear if that's okay. <laughs> I was just goofing and, and trying to get you to talk about the, the wall that you got. I didn't realize you were trying to make them that big. Oh, my my sketchy PVC and foam board wall that I made? You ask yes. anyone from NJCC how many times that thing fell over. <laughs> yeah, I was just I – was, I didn't realize that. So I thought you were just going to bring that up. I didn't know you were going to make banners. No, I, I, made a, <laughs> I made a display wall for all 18 of them so far so that I could sell them at the convention where it's like they're behind me and it's like a concert merch booth where it's like, I want number three. <laughs> and then I uh, rolled flat or framed. You, you, would you sell them framed? At, that, at this convention, I would because uh, it's local to me and I can bring frames. That's a lot of frames to, have to, to cart with you. Damn. Well, hopefully. That's true. If, if the issue is uh, too many sales, then I don't think it's a bad thing. <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, but I was just thinking more like it's got to be easier to bring them when they're all a, a, like a ream or whatever, like a, like a stack of them as opposed to a ream? 20 of them. <laughs> ream? As opposed to like 20 of them in frame, that's got to make things a lot heavier and bulkier and harder I, to bring. Uh, the issue is that I'm probably going to want to frame a few of each ahead of time. So I'm not like, hold on, I gotta go in the back and put it in the frame for you. Wait here, please. <laughs> well, if you have if you have help at the show, you can. If you have, say, a, a frosted flakes to your Pinkerton uh, with you, you can just send them to do it. <laughs> uh, I just might. Uh, so the posters are all available at afullposter.com. You can buy any any of them or all of them, and you can sign up for the subscription where you, it's a little cheaper. But you're going to get it every single month without fail. Last year, I said I'd made three extras. The subscribers got those three extras for free. They were just thrown in to three other months. So you got two posters on three different occasions last year. I haven't lined up any. I call them the bonus posters. I haven't lined up any bonus posters for this year yet. Uh, it so I mean, the bonus posters were all ones I had my graphic designer do, so it wasn't the same commission rate. So it was it was easier for me to put out more posters and not have that much more expense. And they uh, they performed pretty well too. Like the Blacktron one is one of the bonus posters, and that was that's going over very well. Yeah, I, uh, I like that one a lot. The other project I have going right now, which is it's open for enrollment right now. It is, as the time being, it is not a individually purchasable product. It's only through a subscription. It is the sticker pack. I really couldn't come up with a good name for that one, so it's just the sticker pack from Bricks on the Dollar. Clutch's, Clutch's Lego sticker pack, I think, is the uh, descriptive name, but sticker pack is the product name. And it is... What has been deemed the best of Clutch's Secret Stash, which had its nine-month run. Yay. That's Yay. over. March Ooh. is the last month for that. And April is the first month for the sticker pack. So it is a bunch of Lego-themed stickers sent to you in an envelope. Each month is a different theme, different Lego sub-theme. So the first month is going to be Ninjago-themed. And that's going to be the April one. Those ship out at the beginning of April. You're going to get at least eight high-quality stickers in an envelope shipped to you worldwide. You can check that all out at bricksonthedollar.com. 
And hopefully that, that picks up better than the box because it's cheaper, it's more focused, it has the monthly theme to it. And uh, I think it's just easier for everyone, easier for me, easier for USPS. <laughs> and that's so like in the box um, when you still had the uh, Clutch of Secret Stash, you had like builds and things like that. So like you had some Carter Industry builds and stuff like that. Are you, are you still going to be getting those types of things? Kind of just they just won't be in a subscription type thing that you'll still get. Yeah, I, I have three Carter Industries products that I sell, and I'm waiting for him to finish his fourth one. It's a Gundam. It's a Gundam, apparently. Well, that's <laughs> what it was last time we spoke. I don't know if it has changed. It could easily have changed. <laughs> I'll have that for sale whenever that's ready, and I'll continue to make Carter's products for him if he wants to continue creating them for, awesome. for sale. Very cool, because uh, I, I still have both uh, of the Carter Industries like uh, little minifigure mech guys in my cart, and I haven't quite figured out the way to order the other stuff that I need yet on Bricklink, because I'm not very good at Bricklink. At Bricklink, so um, yeah, eventually I will place that order, and eventually I will I will ship it out. You gotta get that free shipping. Damn straight. I'll, I don't want to pay a few dollars for shipping, but I will gladly add an extra $10, $15 to my order so I get free shipping. <laughs> I think we all do that. I think that's the idea. Even I offer free shipping over a certain amount with the intent that people are going to spend a little bit more so they can get the free shipping. Yep. And uh, it certainly works on me. <laughs> I will say that. Nice. Um did you want me to show you something about Bricklink? I forget. Well, um, I, uh, so yes, yeah, so yeah, yet another very smooth transition and <laughs> segue that we just had there. Um, just in general, I think it would be, I think it might be good for those people that are a little more like me that um, you talk about Bricklink all the time and how it is if you're looking for bulk Lego or any just specific things without having to go to the Lego store and go to like the pick a brick wall or anything like that. Bricklink is the way to go. And if that's the best way to do it. And they've gotten much easier to navigate their site, but there's still a lot of stuff that you can do on the site. And so kind of one of the things that we were talking about offline is maybe doing kind of a bit of a series on how to, how to successfully navigate Bricklink or how to, the, the best way to use Bricklink with any tips and tricks that you might have or anything like that. And so Chris and I were talking before that it might be useful. Um, it certainly would be useful to me and hopefully would be useful to others as well is if um, occasionally we, we talk about those things. So we talk about um, how to set up a want list on, uh, on Bricklink, how to uh, just some tips uh, of how to try to, maximize your dollar on Bricklink. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily want to just randomly pick a bunch of bricks that you want from all over the site. Um, things like you, tips that like you want to try to maximize as many as you can from one, one buyer or from one seller to try to get free shipping or whatever that we talked about there. Um, but even for me personally, I, I, I was able to add some of the stuff that Chris sells in his bricks in the dollar shop. Um, because they were sets. So the, the Carter Industries pieces um, are all basically, if you want this, click on this and add it to your cart. That's easy enough. I know how to do that. But if I were to try to get to other stuff that I wanted to use for my own mocks, um, I don't really know the best way to try to navigate that. So um, today, if you want to just take a quick couple of minutes, Chris, and kind of show, um, I guess it's certainly more of a visual piece. So if anybody is listening, this is certainly a place to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, and maybe see Chris do it, but I think it would be uh, certainly helpful to me to try to find out a good way to navigate through the stuff that you have uh, just on, on on your page alone, for example. Sure. Well, we're now looking at the Bricks on a Dollar Bricklink store in its There's awesome the, the 2001 werewolf. glory. <laughs> There's the, uh, the spinner. Uh, I did just watch Blade Runner 2049 the other day. And now I really want that spinner. 
there's also the werewolf, which is in my cart. And uh, and the other mech suit, which at the moment is too small for me to see. The butcher. Um, uh, the butcher, that's it. Both of which are in my shop at the moment. Or in my cart at the moment. Yeah, the um, uh, Blade Runner 2049 won two Academy Awards as well. Hooray! Well deserved, because that movie was fucking awesome. So yeah, this is, I believe this is your landing page. Uh, I, it's probably a little different for me if going to my own store, but I think you land on the the featured tab in the in the shop tab in the store. You can, I, I, I've said it that way because I want it to show the featured items that I put in here. So a seller can populate this featured section and which is only at the top and then it goes into the different item types like sets and parts and minifigs which is generally the newest stuff you listed winds up in there but the featured ones uh i had to put these items in there myself and a couple of them are custom items um this is a gear i think and this is these are two sets you can also uh, set this text up here. It defaults to something terrible, I'm sure. But you can Hot new you items. Can, you can edit it. Yeah, hot Asian zing. I shouldn't have it set. <laughs> let's let's um, let's do that right now. Actually, <laughs> hot Asian zing. It changes. Okay. You got what you asked for, Paul. Where I is it? I think you got what Hot you, Asian Zing. You got what you asked for. Let's let's I let's did, not get it twisted. I, here. I actually tried like four different kinds of wings at B dubs during NJCC. And I've concluded I don't like the dry rubs. The texture is just too weird. Yeah, I've heard the same thing. Um, the only advantage is that they're a little bit cleaner to eat. So if that's a if that's a big deal for you. Then sure, that might do it. But, uh, if but that's yeah. a big deal for you. Then stop going to get the, get boneless with a fork. Exactly, <laughs> be a boneless bitch. <laughs> yeah, as so, uh, as Dust would call it. Yeah, the Pinkertons are both both in that in that camp. Uh, <laughs> so you land here on the shop page. You used to in most stores. You used to land on the splash page. Which look at all this old text I have on here. <laughs> oh boy, is there anything in here that's horribly out of date? Probably. <laughs> wow, this is bad looking. Come on, Bricklink. <laughs> keep up. But in the shop, it's got the featured items. But normally, that doesn't matter at all to the buyer because the buyer's just there to buy the items that they know your store has because they only got to your store because they're looking for the items that they want to buy. Yeah, let's say I wanted some bricks. You want some bricks, huh? <laughs> Go down here and click on brick. And then I'll look at all these bricks I have. And I normally do item number, color, name is the order I do. Okay. But you can rank them by different things. So there are different categories on the left for items, types of items. First, you have sets. Uh, it breaks it down by the theme, but you can also click on the header itself and get all of them. So that's all of the sets. Helicopter for Matt. Helicopter. Count the helicopters. There's one, there's two, there's one in here. There's a... Uh, you know, I really need to go through this and make sure I didn't sell any of these in the store. <laughs> oh, like in the physical store? Yeah. I think we're good. <laughs> you need an intern. Need something that just pings. Oh, I got another one of these. Brink gave me one of these. I gotta, I gotta up my quantity by one. Like who's torn? How did he get it? So Brian buys a lot of everything. Sets. He buys all the Winter Village sets mm -hmm. and holiday stuff, and he he just gets them when there's some kind of promotion, and then the promotion arrives in his shop at home box, and he goes, "What am I gonna do with this?" And then um, then he winds up giving it to me later. I don't think I have that store employee guy. 
And they gave it out a number of times. How the hell do I not have it then? I gotta. I have to verify. Maybe I have them by my um. Like, if you go to a store opening, they got a. They have a, a set that they give you. Maybe I put it in with that. Maybe. So that sets and it breaks it down by theme as well, and you can collapse any of these, which is nice. But next is parts, and you probably don't want to click on all for that kind of thing because it'll be a lot of parts. But it breaks it down by part category. There's a whole category tree for parts. And that's all the ones that I have. There are more categories than this, but these are the ones where I, I have something in that category. It's not going to show a zero. But you can toggle back and forth between category and color. So maybe you're looking okay. for a certain color. You switch it over to color here, and it's going to show you all parts in any of these colors. And it's only showing the colors that I have anything in stock. Okay, so that's not bad. It makes sense. Seems seems fairly relatively straightforward. And obviously, so your that first piece there, you have one of those in the store, and it's a nickel, right? Yeah. Easy enough? Used. Used parts, man. Got to have them. <laughs> After parts is minifigures or minifigs, and it is by category as well. That's right up my alley there. Star War. He's on the Star Wars. <laughs> There's Plo After Koon. Nice. After that, there is gear, which is generally stuff. It's not parts. It's like keychains and magnets and books and stationery, I see. But there. not necessarily books because because books are sometimes in catalog. But whatever. So you can see this is all of them. There's eight whole lots here. I got a a uh storage container divider here that I, I found one of those <laughs> used and I was like, yeah, sure, why not throw it up there? There's a magnet and the notebook and a sticker and a keychain and the 23 of the PS3, PS4, Wii U Dimension toy pad. I don't know what that is. You bought the Dimension starter set. This is the thing you put the figures oh, in. Also, the Star Wars Days Legoland California June 2016 Chewbacca pin. Look at them. I got 16 of them. Why do you have so many of them? Somebody gave them to me to sell. Nice. Pin 125. Wow, there's 124 pins before this one? <laughs> Some, somebody tell Matt. He needs to know. <laughs> That's gear. Gear is not that exciting. Instructions is definitely not that exciting. Is there actually instructions on their own in their non-free, non-PDF format? That was a joke, Paul. I get it. I get it. He gets it. Uh, and then custom items is where you're going to find all the Carter stuff, but it's also always going to be in the features section. Hang on. That's you. There's your Clutch Sync Fig version 2.0. Huh? Let's see it. That's the 2.0, yeah. Where's your beard? That must be 3.0. This must be 3.0. I... <laughs> Some would say this is a 3.0 right here. Where's the, what is your 1.0? What's the difference between this and the 1.0? The 1.0, if you, have, if you, you want to go on a goose hunt, the 1.0 can be found on my eBay profile. I may have to look it up. If you find me on eBay, which you can easily through bricksonthedollar.com, I think the the avatar on there is my 1.0. So clearly, from this, we can determine that you love belts, you love buckles, and you love money. Makes sense. I think that works. And I love being angry and wearing jeans. <laughs> That's that. Super lots is parts. Super lot is when you want to sell two things together because separate, they don't make sense. So like a left and a right wing. These are wings, dragon wings, left and right. And I don't want someone to buy both the lefts and go, ha ha, now you have only the rights. We call I mean, that I, pulling I a rust. Pulling a rust, it is. 
<laughs> I, I do want someone to buy the lefts and leave me with the rights because that means at least they bought something. But I I think if the likelihood of the remaining orphaned part is so incredibly low for selling, then I would want to super lot it. Super lotting takes a few minutes to do because you have to plug in a bunch of numbers. So it's not the most fun thing. So I only have one super lot right now, and it's these wings. So your quantity two there, is that for both wings, or do you have two of each wing? I have two of each wing. They come two in a package, a left and a right. They're kind oh, of in one of those card-backed plastic bag things, got it, got like it. some of the instructions. So, so you, yeah, you can buy them. You can buy I have four wings total, two lefts, two rights, and you buy a left-right pair at the same time. That's all the stuff, all the different categories. And what most people do when they jump into a store is they go to Wanted List, which is the one of the tabs under Shop. And um, there's also Newest. I think a lot of people, more so than I, I, I would imagine, do Newest, which means if they're watching my store frequently... Mm-hmm. Sorry, I am about at my limit for today. But if you're watching my store frequently and you have open orders in my store and you want to keep adding to it, you can click on newest and it's going to display, I believe, by day, all of the um, parts I've added to the store that are new to the store. So if it consolidates with an item that's already in the store, then uh, it's it's not going to show up here because it's it's not new to the store. You just have more of something you have had. This is going to do all the new ones. Mm-hmm. I like this white magnet holder here was a surprising eight dollars and eighty two cents. Damn. Though I guess how often do you get them? Probably not. You wouldn't get it was, often. You get one in one set in that color. So. I thought the, uh, the there's a dark gray one of them, too, that's pretty expensive. There's your windmill. So, there's my windmill. Yeah, so it has the date I listed them on the bottom of each entry. But if you are watching the store and, and I, I'm, I upload more often than I have been uploading, then you can click on newest and just kind of scroll down until you see stuff that you've seen before. Maybe Interesting. add a few things to your card if you have a long-term order. But the place that I think people most likely go is the wanted list tab and of course there's nothing in my own store that i was on my wanted list but if you click on the wanted list tab here and you have multiple wanted lists you can check or uncheck any of your wanted lists or just show them all and it'll show you everything that you have determined that you want because it's on your wanted list it'll show you everything that store has that matches your wanted list well, that actually makes it pretty easy then. I think we, we can go into detail about the whole exactly how to set up a wanted list and all that stuff in another another segment or whatever. But that is a I, I can see that being a very helpful tool on there, to be honest. Like if you if you got a build that you want to make or if there's a set that you are specifically looking to complete, you can just I imagine load up that wanted list and then it'll yeah, it'll let I you know these there's three hundred of those pieces that are all available at uh, bricks on the dollar here. Yeah, we can definitely talk about wanted list later. I I use the wanted list myself when I'm sourcing all the parts for the Carter Industries kits, so it's helpful. The last thing I want to talk about for for navigating in store here is all of the slew of information here underneath the store name. So in the top left, you have your your store name. You're in. So this is as bricks on a dollar. It's got in my picture. As my my what is it? It's a slogan? I think they call it a slogan. And it's the smallest big time store around. And uh, it has the username and the feedback, the all time feedback. It has a brick that correlates to different feedback like uh, tiers, like tiers or brackets. Yeah. So I'm I guess the seven is, is the se- is the seventh one. It has a little seven in it. Yeah. One, two, three, four. F- yeah. So the seventh color brick is orange, um, which is 5,000 to 10,000 feedback. Damn. Look at you go. Yep. I'm halfway between 
uh, halfway through my orange break. Then it has a lightning bolt because I have instant checkout on my store because I'm not afraid of the internet. And then it has the me page, which is also probably really, which is totally ripped straight from eBay. But uh, it, the uh, the the idea of the me page, not the uh, the text or my particular one, but it's um, probably also out of date. It's got my state and country and my country flag and whether I ship to myself or not. And apparently, <laughs> I, apparently, I do. Well, that's so good to know. <laughs> you, you could. You can wind up in a store in another country that doesn't actually ship to you, and it, I guess it won't have that, or it says, "Yeah, it's not shipped to me." That was um, one of the things when I first started going on Bricklink, and this was years ago, granted. But like, you do, you end up like if you just sort by absolute cheapest. A lot of times, you might get stores that are that are in other countries and things like that, and then it doesn't take into account like shipping or whether or not they'll even ship to you, and. I had gotten to that point where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. I need this piece and this piece. And so I was literally just going store to store to store because I was just going purely by um, by by price only and not seeing that there was a, a minimum buy needed for some stores or, oh, now they don't actually ship to me. And how much is it going to cost me to do shipping for each of these eight stores that I've chosen? And then I got frustrated and then I just stopped. So I, I never made that order. I ordered from lego.com. And got them that way. <laughs> and so, got them a month later. Yeah, indeed. Because it's funny that you say that because uh, it's in the email that the that they send you. We're working really hard on getting the bricks that you want. We know that that you really want the the specific ones you need to to build what you want to build. So we're going. We're being very careful, and we're going individually to pull them all from our big inventory. It may take a little while, but we want to make sure that you got all the stuff that you asked for. We have the <laughs> so, robot yeah. set to turtle instead of rabbit. <laughs> I'd like to see how that is actually fulfilled. That would be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, it definitely would be. I'm sure I could learn a thing or two or maybe even teach them a thing or two about it. There you go. I, I had somebody come in my store yesterday, yesterday or today, who talked about how they've ordered from... Uh, bricks and pieces before on the Lego website. And uh, I think they wound up buying the parts also from Bricklink because it took so long to get them from Lego or <laughs> I don't remember what the story was. That's all. It's always the same story. They, they don't know where to get parts. They buy them from Lego. They find Bricklink. They don't understand Bricklink. And then they curl up in a ball somewhere and cry. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it was for me. So I think that, uh, as you and I had talked about offline and are now doing here, I think it is, it could be beneficial for people like me um, to have a brick link tutorial series type thing. I think it'd be, it would be helpful certainly because it is a much better way to get bulk Lego and to get loose pieces than, than it would be to try to go through Lego.com. Like, like we just talked about there, it could take a long time. It's not necessarily the cheapest way to do it ebay is all sorts of shady and you you are very <laughs> limited in what you can get on ebay so um this certainly is something that is helpful for me as i want to build certain i've got a couple mocks that i want to do um and a couple mech suits that i want to build that i need more pieces for so this will be very helpful yeah so uh future segments would be making a want of list uh placing an order because that's what the only thing we didn't do inside the store was actually run through the checkout process because that's it's pretty streamlined but there's also a lot on the screen all at one time and you can you can miss things i i often i so i issue coupons to everybody who buys from me and uh, a lot of times people will place an order and they won't use their coupon because it's not by default turned on when you check out from a store that has issued you a coupon you have, uh. to, you have to select it in the checkout process, which when I think about it is probably pretty standard. I mean, why wouldn't a store who's given you a coupon want you to accidentally forget to use that coupon? <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, you have to turn on a coupon if you have one. So maybe eventually when I'm working on the next Carter kit and I have, I have a want list going, I can actually place an order like live, live on the show. Ooh, 
Or maybe I'll actually place my my uh, bricks and dollar order, and I can. Yeah, share. You, you can screen share placing an order in my store. Also, a great plan, and I'll, <laughs> I'll walk you through it and 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 show you all the impulse items. <laughs> Look at this spinner. Look at that one right over there. It's just right waiting for you right there. <laughs> You'll get all free right. shipping with that for sure. <laughs> so I think I need to pull up a certain image now. Sounds good. And while you're doing that. Uh, like always, we want to thank everybody for watching us on YouTube, especially um, as this has got this had a lot of uh, visual stuff uh, with this episode. Um, if you are listening to us on iTunes and uh, or Google Play, um, I would recommend checking us out on the YouTube channel for this one, episode 19, which should go live on Fridays. Um, Either way, if you like what you hear or like what you watch, give us a thumbs up, give us a good rating, give us a thumbs down or a bad rating. Either way, it's going to help us out to find out the best way to get to what you guys want to talk about and what you guys would like to hear from us. want to also shout out to everybody in the Realm of Collectors. Um, make sure you check out the ROC Facebook page at Realm of Collectors. Also check out their Instagram account at, at Realm of Collectors and uh, follow the hashtag Realm of Collectors. Um, also, check out the RumbleCollectors.com webpage. Um, and if you are liking building up to it, also check out the Cool Table Network, which has a number of podcasts that might be suited to your likes, including shows like Enter the Realm, Breaking the Mold, Figure Banging, Stasis Lock, Nerd Rage Radio, Shattered Cast on Cuts, Plastic Fanatics, Toy Detox, Beer and Bolters 40K, Eight Weeks, and Fresh Communication. All of which are part of a friendly family, but might not be so family friendly. I inverted that one. I see what you're doing now. I did because I swore a lot in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, the only other thing I wanted to say, I forget what I was going to say. Were you going to say, did I hit the button? No, I was going <laughs> to say something had to do with your outro. Oh well. Like, oh, I I know. No, nah, sorry. Now, now I can actually wrap it up. Um, your we got all your messages, all of your your addresses and your fears. It's okay. The fears have been recorded. The poly bag, your free poly bags, they are. In